What's going on YouTube? Welcome to Ice Up Gaming and today I'm going to be giving you a character guide with the best build for Merlin. Now before we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to keep up with any future content, I'll be leaving the link to my Discord and my Twitch in the description below. And before we get to the character guide, let me go ahead and give you this character's best build. So the biggest problem with Merlin is that this character is a mid to late game character with some pretty um, abysmal cooldowns at the beginning. So what you want to do is that you want to get cooldowns on him as soon as possible before you get your pen. So what you're going to be starting with um, when you're taking him to mid lane is you're obviously going to be going Mage's Blessing. But the first card you're going to want to be building, I can find it, is Kronos Pendant. You're going to want this extra cooldowns. You want the 20% cooldowns at the very beginning, plus the extra 10% from your Mage's Blessing. So getting that on is a must. However, you're not going to be able to get Chronos Pendant on first item every single time. So if you have to, go Shoes of Focus. These two items together will basically get rid of all of your cooldown needs. That already gives you 40%. Because uh, Mage's Blessing gives you 10%, which is max, max stack. This gives you 20. This gives you 10 and then it takes away a second from all of your abilities currently on cooldown that are um, every 10 seconds. So it really gets rid of Merlin's issues at the very beginning. Now, after this, it depends on the situation. What you're going to want to get, if you're fencing somebody with a lot of healing, you're going to want to get Divine Ruin. If not, you're going to want to go Spare the Magus as soon as possible. Merlin is probably the number one candidate to really abuse Spare the Magus because he gets to throw so many abilities at you. So no matter what, you're getting Spare the Magus. Afterwards, you're going to want to get Divine Ruin, depending if they have a uh, lifesteal or if they are building it against you, but you're going to want that item as well. Now, for your survivability, you can go Bancroft. Um, it does give you a plenty of magical power and you get more lifesteal um, the lower your health gets, so this card is really strong. However, personally, I would recommend you build Soul Gym because eventually you're going to have to get rid of Mage's Blessing, right? And this gives you 150 health to get you a tad bit of survivability. It gives you the lifesteal, gives you power, and then since he has so many abilities, he can get uh, Soul Gem procs very, very often, along with the extra 10% cooldown. So this card will essentially replace your Mage's Blessing. Next, you're going to want to Rata Tahuti. Rata Tahuti is an essential item for this character. It makes it to where um, his abilities will hit even harder once they drop below a certain threshold. And trust me, with all the abilities you're going to be throwing at them, you're going to want this item. And then finally, when you get the chance and you can sell boots, you're going to go with Elixir Speed, and you're going to get a Soul Reaver. Soul Reaver is really good on characters who have a lot of tick damage. Burst characters are really strong as well, but Merlin gets the most benefit from Soul Reaver since all, the ability, all his abilities will proc it. So, this is usually going to be what your final build looks like. Um, uh, sometimes you're going to want to get rid- sometimes you might not need the Soul Gem. Sometimes you can go with a little bit more movement speed because this character is pretty mobile even though he has a teleport. So if you want to, you could probably you can replace Soul Gem with a Doom Orb. Just know you're going to be losing some of your cooldowns, but you're going to get the extra movement speed, the extra power, and a crap ton of mana. So, this is what your final build should be looking like. Now, now that we're done with his build, let's go ahead and go over how his abilities work. First things first, you need to know about this character's passive. Now, at first glance, his passive isn't that strong. Basically what it does, after firing an ability, his next basic attack will be augmented with lightning, dealing extra damage to the first en uh, to the first enemy it hits. This These stacks last for 5 seconds, and he gets 3 charges. So basically, you throw an ability, then your next basic attack will do extra damage. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So you saw how my first attack did 189. Now it's doing 203. Plenty, plenty of damage. Now, as you may know, this character has three different stances. So we're going to go over each stance, starting with the Void Stance, and go over in-depth about how each stance should be played. Now, Void Stance, his first stance, the one you start off with, is your Poking and Clearing Stance. This is um good for setting up your team because his second ability does have a pull on it. And then the AoE from his first ability can help clear waves extremely easily while getting those easy tick damages on the enemy mid laner. Let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. And it pulls them back to the center. So you can see when they're affected by it, that entire circle is where they're going to be taking that tick damage. So that's really, really strong. Now his third ability is the same throughout every single one. It's a teleport. That's it. It can get you out of some really, uh, really shitty situations, but just know you're not going to go as far as you used to, so use this move very, very wisely. Up next, we're going to be talking about Merlin's Fire Stance. Now, Merlin's Fire Stance is for anti-ganking 
and his main source of damage. This stance will do the most damage out of all of your abilities because your second ability will actually take protections away from the person hit from the dead center of the ability, while your first ability will do not only a burst amount of damage, but it'll also apply burn. This can do a lot of damage over time. However, this is his most is his most unsafe stance. Um so don't use this way too aggressively, especially since you're a sitting duck if you use your first ability. Um let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. As you can see, a lot of damage could be happening in the middle of all that. However, they can only be casted so far. So you, so if you use this stance, you're usually going to be using it for anti-ganking, for ganking, or when you're absolutely sure you can kill somebody. Really, really strong. Finally, we're going to be talking about Merlin's Frost Stance. Now, Merlin's Frost Stance is used for safety and for getaways. This is his getaway stance. So... His second ability has a slow on it, and his first ability will do more damage if they are slowed. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be throwing your second ability when you're running away, down at your feet. Turning around and then hitting them with your one, and then just running away. Now this can be used for wave clear. This is a very safe option for your wave clear, but since this character's wave clear got nerfed in his eye stance, it's better just to use the voice stance. However, this stance can be very, very useful if the enemy mid laner is a little bit more aggressive or the jungler is a little bit more aggressive so you have a little bit more safety. Because this goes pretty far, as you can see. You can drop this on the back wave and just be under tower. But, like I said, it's better just to use the void stance. One more thing we need to talk about with Merlin's stances is that you can actually choose which stance you can go to. Usually when you switch stances, it goes in order from void, fire, and then into ice. And then ice back into void. But you can actually control which stance you can go into, making it a lot more versatile so you can answer certain situations. Now, how you do that, as you can see, is that each stance is mapped to an ability slot. Your voice stance is going to be on your first ability slot, your fire stance is going to be on your second ability slot, and then your frost stance is going to be mapped to your third ability slot. All you have to do is, touch, is tap your ultimate ability and then immediately tap the stance you want to go into. So, you see I'm in fire. Since I want to go back to void, I just press my first ability and I'm back in void. This can make it to where... Um, you can answer situations very, very easily. Finally, we're going to be talking about Merlin's leveling path. Now, because of how this character has been changed, your first ability that you're going to be getting is your first ability. Because this has, in your void stance that you're starting with it, has the most clear and is relatively better and does more damage than your ice stance. Next, when you level up, you're going to go into your second ability. And then finally, you're going to go into your third ability. Um, you're going to be leveling your first ability over everything else. Um, just because you're going to be in voice stance most of the time when you're clearing. So your, vo so your first ability in your voice stance is going to be doing the most. Also, when you do switch into your fire stance, this will do more damage. And your tick damage will be affected by it as well. So that's always really nice. So for me, this character is somebody that I would get the ultimate when I hit level 5. However, as I'm leveling... And I get to like level 9. I'm not going to use it on the ultimate. I'm going to use it on my first and second ability. Because you want the most out of these two abilities. So what I would usually do is get to 9. And then put um, put a point into your second ability. And then max out your first ability. Because you want as much protection shred on your second ability. on For your fire stance as much as possible. And then as you're leveling... You're going to want to level up your run move because this is affected by this will reduce the cooldowns so leveling this over your ultimate ability is a lot more beneficial to, for you considering the fact that you can get your run move a lot faster so the final thing that we're going to talk about is merlin's game plan now what you're going to be doing is that every single time you combo somebody you should be ending in fire stance so you start in void stance you throw your first two abilities Instantly switch to fire stance and then drop your fire stance. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. That's a lot of DPS. So that's usually what your combos are going to be looking like. So um, be sure that when you end in fire stance though that um, you have a way back out. Because as you can see this does go on a cooldown for 16 seconds. So it can leave you in a really peculiar situation if you either don't get a group kill or um, the team starts to focus you while you're in fire stance. Be careful with that. The last thing I want to talk about is that whenever you're casting abilities, be sure 
to throw a basic attack between each one. Yes, I know, you can burst somebody down by just throwing abilities, but having this extra bit of damage, it gives you an extra 105, what, 115 damage at max rank. Scale it off your abilities between between um, abilities. So this would actually net you a lot of damage. So be sure to get used to throwing auto attack. And that will be it for this Merlin guide. Yes, I know this is this is a lot shorter than my other guides, but I'm pretty sure y'all are intelligent. Y'all can read what every single ability can do. I'm just doing a little overview and how to build the characters. So if you like the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any other questions about the character, don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Or if you would like to inform me about any new information about the character that you feel will be really strong for this character, don't forget to leave a comment. Without further ado, I'll catch y'all later.